in this position, here, here, here. Before we get into the juru number six, I want to expound a little bit on what your stance should actually be like. Even though you're seeing it with the jurus, this will give you a little bit better explanation. If you're doing your stance and you're not doing a juru, to find your proper uh, width of your feet, put your feet together, go one, two, three, four. It gives you a pretty approximate distance of your body capabilities for what the stance should be. It's a shoulder, approximately shoulder width stance. When you step out forwards, you step straight out with this foot and then turn the foot about 30 degrees to the left and the other foot bent in slightly. So if you had two perpendicular lines drawn from both feet, at somewhere out there they would cross. That shows that your stance is correct, not straight out where the lines would never meet. All body uh, blows or weapons are pointed towards the attacker. So you have both knees, both feet, both shins, both hands, and both elbows and your head pointed towards your attacker. It's, a, it's like shooting a gun if you can't hit what you're not aiming at. So if I did this, I would be pointing most of my weaponry away instead of towards. This hand is held very lightly from a side angle on the left or at the opposite, whichever side you're on, forearm, not across, but very lightly on. This keeps check of this hand. If you did this or this or something else, you can lose this hand in a fight and not actually realize where it is and get hit. But if it's here, you always know where it is and you actually, although appearing to be open, have a lot of counter blow possibilities in here to cover yourself up. And again, it's relating to the decoy aspect of C-Lot, which you'll see a little bit later on. Now with juru number six, uh, we get into a juru called ricochet hitting. And again, it starts with, since it's an even number juru, number two. Now from the apogee of the punch, this hand comes back, forward, and back in again from this angle. Drew number six is very unusual in that it teaches the principle of ricocheting off your own body back into the person or off of their blows back into them uh, as a target. So if we have a man here and we're doing the principles of Drew number six and I throw this punch at him and he blocks it across his body with this arm, then the punch comes back here and it's immediately thrown back into his body. Very basic concept. So you have this ricochet action. However, it can also work in a different manner that if he throws this arm towards my head and I hit, I can also use this momentum or the opposite action that you get from every blow to go back into his body from a different angle. So that's one of the things that's not real apparent, but it does teach that principle. Okay, you can see it from this angle over here. So the first thing we did is I threw a punch this way. He blocked it across his body here. It's brought back and hit this way. So I still have a check here. I still have an elbow here. This hand is here in case I get a low attack this way. Shot back into his face. Or if he throws a punch with this hand, and I hit my ricochet straight back into him again. Drew number seven starts with number one. And you drop into a V this way with these hands here. Punch, punch. From a different angle. Drew number seven is designed to open a person up. It can be two simultaneous blocks or it can be a rather sneaky block from the outside. So, if in an inner gate situation, if you have a person who throws a double punch or even one punch and you want to double guard yourself, the punch with this hand would be this position here, heel palm, and this hand is also ready to deliver a second blow, one possibility. A possibility that's not very apparent is against kicks. Since the lot fights in a low stance, if you're in a low stance and you have a frontal kick that aims at this, aims at this part of your anatomy and the person throws this kick, then you have a double elbow blow here with parries and a count of follow-up. Another possibility is if he throws a punch with this hand and steps forward with this foot and I decide to flank him instead of going into his inner gate, then I parry this way and this turns into a pull situation where I'm pulling on him here, his natural reaction would be to pull back and I sweep 
follow up. Drew number eight, we're going to go over. Don't forget, Drew means upper body movement, so that's why you're seeing mostly moves from the waist up on these. And in Drew number eight, you have your first combination, Drew, which takes two of the ones that you previously had and puts them together. And the main reason that we're doing this is to teach you to flow from one technique to the other. So number eight starts with number two. Six, three, but this time pull it back because this is eight, not three. At least the only one that stays out. From an angular. Drew number three. So in a ap practical application, Again, this time you would have the man throws a punch with this hand, you counter, and then he throws a punch with this hand, so you'd have to flow from one into the other. So if you're here, and I throw the punch and parries it, I come back here, he throws this punch here, we pull in and hit. And of course, from here, we can also sweep, especially if you get a man extended like that. All Indonesian martial arts always end with the sweep to put the man on the ground, even though we're not showing you that to all the gurus. We'll get to that later. This is a basic principle of the system. Drew number nine. Starts with Drew number one. From here, your hand moves across this way, your fist pulls back, there is a sapu or sweep with this left foot, a right foot actually, punch, ending the Drew. Now, this is an extremely important Drew because it teaches two parries or blows and a simultaneous sweep at the same time. So we'll see it from a different angle. What it's encompassing is, starting with the hand motions, if you have a punch coming directed to your face at this angle, you have two possible parries in here, one with the edge of your hand here, and one at the bottom of your fist this way. This cup parry is extremely painful, but when it's applied with the fist, pulling down the arm, you have like a, a double damage on the arm. So just with the parry itself, the man punches, you have this, it sort of pulls him down and allows you room to slide straight up his arm into his body. Now, being that it goes along this way and not this way or this way, is kind of a sneaky blow and a little harder to stop. In practical application, if he was leading with this leg and he threw this punch at the same time, what it would do, it would off, this sweep would off balance him so when he throws this, you have an off balance motion and it doesn't go down, then you have a blow to his head because he's puts him off balance. If he falls, you can't deliver this. So this whole idea, this one is, if your sweep misses here or doesn't actually put him down, you still pull him off balance enough to deliver this blow to his head. If he falls, then you don't even need this. But it does teach you to double parry at the same time. So to give you a little idea with, with speed, at least on the parry, if he throws a punch, <laughs> And that would be the movement off the parry. Now, looking at it from this angle again, uh, as far as the parry is concerned, him is punching with this hand. You have a cup parry here, so he punches. The cup is here. The fist takes over, brings down. Now, you might ask yourself, what if he throws a punch to the other hand? You're wide open. Really not. Just to show you, if he throws a punch to my head with this side, the arm comes up this way and the punch comes straight down in. So nothing is as exactly as it appears in the system. Anyway, this pulls him down, and this hits straight to the head. The sweep is produced at the same time, but really the punch is designed if you miss the sweep. So if his foot's standing here, and I'm coming in, and he throws this, and I miss this sweep, or he doesn't go down, it still pulls him off balance enough so that I can deliver this blow. If I would have swept him, he'd have fell down, and I'd use a different follow-up. Drew number 10 is the first revolving Drew, which hits in two directions. So it's number 10. We start with two. Hits back with an elbow, pivot on your heels, hit out with the spear point with the left hand, elbow with the back. Elbow, spear, pivot on the heels, elbow, turn, exchange, punch, exchange, punch. This one's a little bit longer. Principles, and well, I'll show it to you from a different angle.
principals are hitting all around you for attackers front and rear, especially at, at different ranges. The actual movement with the heels is to allow you to learn when you're in close to pivot on the, on the heels of your feet and move because if you do on the balls of your feet, you lose punching power. In close, you want to be rooted to the ground so all your blows hit with the energy going straight down into the ground and into the floor. If you're up on the balls of your feet, your foot goes down first and you lose punching ability. So a practical application would actually be to start off with, unless you had um, more than one person to do this with, if you're doing it this way, after the last motion of the juru, you would actually turn, and if you had somebody coming right up on you, straight to your back, one, he backs up from the blow, two, he gets hit here. Now you simulate grabbing him and pulling him back in, hitting him this way. Okay, then you duplicate the same motion from the other side, and remember all jurus end on the open side or the foot that's back, so you have to carry the motions through till you end on the back leg. Juru number 11 starts with number one. From the last punch, this hand comes back, sweep back to the side this way, elbow forwards, continue. Very, very similar uh, to a previous jury that you had, except this time the person is coming in on the, you're hitting on the lead leg and not the back leg with your counter follow-up. So what this move is, I'll show you from the side angle and then we'll go over actual applications. You're doing a number of things here. Okay, this motion that you're doing here is a parry. It could be a parry on the arm. For instance, if he throws this punch here, you're doing this, you're pulling him back into you, you're coming straight forward with an elbow into the head. One possible application. The foot position being this way is a guard against any round or circular kick coming around this way. So if the man first throws a kick around this way, this is the block, and he throws the punch, this is the pull. He pulls down in, and he comes straight down into an elbow, Drew, because he put himself in range for the elbow. If you see it from an opposite side, again, breaking it down, this is the motion to protect yourself from being kicked because you can't drop your hands. You're too concerned with what's going on up here. So if you're in a stance and the kick comes around, or even at speed, this is the block for the kick. As the punch comes in, these are your blocks that I showed you before. You're pulling him down as this comes up and recoil straight into him. So he goes down, and obviously a follow-up would be encompassed at the same time. Drew number 12 is, again, a punching Drew. Uh, punching against lower leg kicks. So it starts at number two. From the opposite side. Drew number 12 it's the destruction of a kick and the attack of a lower extremity with your hands. So, from the last position, we've gone through Drew number two, like you're used to doing. This first move, again, is a block to a kick that you're not sure if it's leg level or high, or it could be in the middle of your body. So you want to get it this way, so you make sure that it's blocked. So if you have like a round kick coming around in here, this way. Now from here, the kick is punched back down again and you drive straight into it to the lower extremities with the punch. This is to the bladder area. The bladder is between the belly button and the groin. It's very soft in here, and there's no muscle in there compared to the abdomen section. So it's very, very soft. So that's your target for this blow. From this side over here, again, to cover you, protect yourself from a kick coming in at this angle in like an intermediate range. Kick here, drop it down straight into the bladder area. Keep this hand right here to protect the side of your